Okay. Why don't you put your wrench, walking wrench or, or vice grips or whatever you want to do, grab it, rotate the whole block or the block holding the wrist guard 180 degrees so it can pop out of these notches on the bottom side. And here we try to weasel it out like that. And that's it. I kind of messed up the wood a little bit, but you can see where I'm getting at there. And then uh, just take this clip, because you're going to need this clip again to put back in there. And just remember whereabouts it went on here. There you go. Okay, and then lastly we need to take the butt stock off and all the accoutrements that are on it. So take a flathead screwdriver for these two screws here. Kind of hard the first time. Don't be afraid of it. Save that screw. Get to the next one. Put that there. Now, this is kind of stuck in here, so this is going to take some work to get out. Hold on. Okay. What I had to do is get this in here a little bit and take this flat head. You gotta be real careful so you don't break the wood here, but I had to get in here and push it out a little bit on both sides, scoot it out. Let's see here. You can push it out a little bit and not mess up the receiver too much and scoot it out. And then on the inside in here, there's a hole. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a hole and then you can get your screwdriver in there, leverage it in, and start backing it out. And then, uh, it finally comes out. You make darn certain that I'm going to sand this down so it'll go in a lot, lot more nicer next time. But anyway, once we're done with that, we can get rid of this. Okay finish this job out, we have to take the rest of this hardware off, so I need to go in this butt stock and this cleaning kit that always falls apart on me. It's, it's great to have because you can use it for a Mosa Nagan as well, but because um, the threading is such that you can use the same nylon brush on a Mosa as you could on this, but anyway, still a pain in the neck. So anyway, we got to take all this hardware off, so First we're going to do is take these screws off here and here. You're going to need probably a smaller flathead to get these. And they're going to take some elbow grease to get off. screw. Don't get them confused with these or any other screws that you're going to be taking off. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Looks like that one's messed up, so I'm going to have to get a different screwdriver. Hold on. Okay. After finding a Dremel tool, I had a narrow enough way for me to scratch out deep enough groove. This has been stripped out somehow. Anyway, I was able to get just enough on here with this very thin flathead screwdriver to get it to start eating out. That's going to be a problem, putting back on. But where there's a will, there's a way. And now, I'm going to strip it out. Slowly ease it out, and we'll be able to continue with our project here. Oh man! You know I can see why people get those parts kits now because then you'll be able to just take this stuff out and 
hopefully put better parts in. So anyway, keep your screws separate. Keep them with the adjoining items. And now we'll continue. Take this piece off. Do everything by hand too. Don't try to use power tools because I'll just easily strip these out. I think that's obvious, but in case you haven't thought of that already, I'm just going to tell you now. You can save yourself the grief. Okay. And let's see how that work. Uh oh. must have gone in here like that. Yeah. This is a new thing <laughs> for me. This piece, just so you know, this comes off like this. And it comes, you put it back on like this so that you can cover that hole and stick that thing in there. He said hole. There we go. All right. After all is said and done, now the stock is completely stripped of anything metal except for these reinforcement uh, nails here I guess. You can see that uh, it is laminate so it is going to take a little work to sand it down. You could even see inside there I think maybe a little bit. And there's a, you know what, just so you know there is a spring in here but you should be able to leave it in there and it'll be just fine. So that's it. Now the fun part begins. So I'm going to take all this stuff, organize it so I know where everything is. Okay, just for organizational purposes, I'm going to keep the bottom of the, uh, of the butt, butt stock here. I'm going to keep all those pieces in here in this bucket or this uh, cup. Then I'm going to put, just so I know the difference, I'm going to put these two screws to hold the stock in a Ziploc bag. there. Then I'm going to take the screws, these smaller ones, for the strap in a separate Ziploc bag. Put them in there. I'm going to put this uh, the gas tube. I'm going to put the uh, cleaning kit there. And then we're done. Then we know everything that we took off from the hardwood for the most part is in one cup. Okay, now we're back to just the stocks that we're going to be working on, or parts of the stock. Um, we have your butt stock here, as you can see, it's laminated, like I said before. It has, uh, it's been quite a bit of, gotten quite a bit of use already. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do for sure is make sure I sandpaper, even though I don't necessarily need to do these areas, I'm going to sandpaper this area in particular just enough so I can be able to slide it back on without having as much problem or as many problems as I had earlier. So we're going to do that and this top uh, hand stock that covers the uh, gas tube, as you can see it's, uh, I guess it's birch, it's not really laminate it's completely different kind of graining here I don't know how that's going to affect it when I finally stain it but um, as you can see here, it's got some wear on it, but once you sand it down, it won't be so bad. Uh, but first, we're going to have to clean this out, because this has got a ton of gunpowder and residue that I just haven't gotten out yet. So we'll start by taking an old rag and clean that out. Golly, look at that. You can tell I didn't clean that. Not that it's necessarily required, but... You know, you want to get these as clean as possible before you start sanding them down. 